Welcome back to another episode of Tech TLDR. In today's SpaceX news update, we are going to talk about the possible SN10 static fire coming up this weekend. I have some new news regarding that, some hints that suggest that we may see some very early testing with the SN10. We're also going to talk about the Starlink mission that had to be postponed from this weekend to later next week. A recent contract SpaceX got with NASA and also what today is in the history of space. So let's get into all of that. Before I do that, be sure to click the like button. It helps me out a ton. It lets me guys, lets me, that I can talk, lets me know you guys like this content. Today in history, SpaceX wants the Falcon Heavy three years ago for the very first time, putting the first vehicle, Tesla, into outer space. Just wanted to let you guys remind you all that just three years ago, something that so many people didn't think could happen, finally happened. And it gives a lot of hope as to the Starship program. Think about how many boosters failed, how many missions failed before Falcon missions finally were successful, before we could see boosters land successfully. Anyway, SN10. The second engine is getting ready to be installed into that bad boy. There's going to be three in total installed. So once the third one is in, they're set for the static fire, as long as everything's installed properly. Now, this is, of course, Saturday. The second one's being installed by Monday. Everything should be installed, I would assume, considering that the first was installed just yesterday. Second one today. Give it Sunday, Monday. I don't know how if they're working on Sunday. By Monday, I would put my money that all the engines will be installed, which brings me to the closures that are happening. Monday, February 8th, Thursday, or Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of this coming week all have road closures. Now, if you don't know what that's about, in the area they have to close the roads down so that way nobody gets hurt if the static fire goes wrong if there's a rud no one gets popped no one's beach day gets ruined because spacex is trying to do a test that's what these closures are for and these closures give us insight that we very may well see a static fire happen on those days i wouldn't put my money on monday though like i said i think by monday they'll still be installing everything and making sure everything is proper Tuesday, they don't have the closure, but Wednesday, I think Wednesday would be the earliest we could see it if the SN10 does do the static fire. You guys let me know in the comments, what do you think? Do you think we'll see the SN10 do a static fire this week, or do you think we're going to have to wait a little bit longer? I know at the SN9, we had to wait a bit, and then when it finally did the static fire, the SN9's engines were no good, and it had to replace two of them. SN10, hopefully, doesn't have to go through that. Like I said, in the comments, let me know. What do you think about that? Next thing we have is SpaceX's Starlink launch that was supposed to happen this weekend. They're postponing it to do more testing on the Falcon 9, so it's not going to be happening this weekend. It will be happening later this coming week. And just remember, a few days ago, they launched Starlink, and they're going to do another one within a week. That shows that, like I just said earlier, with the whole three years ago, the Falcon Heavy launch for the first time, look how far they've come. They're launching a Falcon. It's not the Heavy, granted, but they're doing a Falcon 9 launch every week with the Starlinks on board. And to give an update on the Starlinks, they're now at about 10,000 users worldwide. That's not a lot of people, but they just started the program. And also think about the demand they have for the program. They're currently working with the FCC to allow more services. Countries like Russia, they're not allowing SpaceX to do this. I highly doubt China's going to allow any Starlink in there. Europe, most likely, different parts of Africa, Australia, New Zealand, South America, there's a lot of talk going on with those areas that they're going to be getting the Starlink. Good to see SpaceX's other endeavors besides just getting contacts from NASA are going well. As we talked about before, the Starlink so it's going to fund future missions for SpaceX, and they're going to be putting pretty much all of that money, the profit that they can make from the Starlink, into the research and development for further vehicles to work on Starships, to make the next thing after a Starship. Who knows what that next craft will be, but that money will come from the Starlink program I love seeing the progression they're making with that. That brings me to the final story. NASA and SpaceX have agreed on a launch in 2024. But at least that means that SpaceX will be around in 2024 because they have to do this launch for NASA. Now, this is for the NASA SphereX mission. On their website here, they talk about it a bit more. This satellite is going to be used to survey over 300 million galaxies. That's mind-boggling. It's looking for things that would uh, allow for life to live, such as water. Primar primarily water is what they're looking for. 
other gases and dust as well. But the idea here is to see, can we find other areas that may sustain life? Can we find things to look at further? Put this out there to see stuff that we can't already see. Is there sustainable life possibilities? If the answer is yes, further look into those areas. But just that number, though, 300 million, that's I. That's stupid. That is stupid. And to think that's literally nothing compared to how big space is. It just, it just shows you how insignificant your problems are when you think about the fact that there's 300 million galaxies, not planets, not stars, galaxies that host so many solar systems with the, it's, yeah, I don't need to explain it. You guys understand what I'm saying. That's all I have for this episode. If you want more of this content, if you enjoy this content, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Also drop a like. It helps me out a ton. And let me know in the comments what you think. Questions, comments. I love interacting with you guys, hearing what you guys have to say. Either way, have a good one.